What's up, Gun Nuts? It's Ferrari Steve, and today I'm going to do an unboxing video and field strip for a gun I am really excited about. This X, no, it's not the X-Men, it's the MPX from Sig Sauer. Ooh, baby, there she is. Wow. I am going to call it right now. This is going to be a big seller for Sig. Uh, they just started shipping these. Um, and I think they're going to sell a lot. What is the MPX? Well, SIG is touting it as a next generation submachine gun. Um, it's the world's first submachine gun that operates with a fully closed and locked rotating bolt. Um, that makes things safer for the person pulling the trigger in case you get an obstruction in the barrel. It's less likely to kill you. Um, it uses SIG's gas operated short stroke, uh, short stroke piston system. Uh, very, very reliable, and it's in pistol caliber. So this one happens to be a 9mm, but you can very, very easily convert it to a 357 SIG or a 40 Smith & Wesson uh, just with a magazine and a barrel change, and you will not believe how easy the barrel change is on this. Before we go any further, let's do a quick safety check. We're going to uh, open the bolt, lock it open, have a look inside, visually and manually inspect, and normally, if you're running an AR-15, you might just slam your hand here and slide it shut. But if you had a one of those bad levers, you could just tick it up here. However, look at this. You just hit that and you have closed your bolt. Now, you might notice I could have slammed here on this side. I can do here. If this gun is totally set up to be ambidextrous. Safety's on both sides. Uh, magazine release on both sides. And the ability to close your bolt on both sides. Left or right handed shooters or left or right hand preference for operating your controls. You've got them. And if you know how to run an AR-15, you know how to run an MPX. It's designed to be very, very familiar to people who operate and clean and field strip uh, an AR-15. Um, set up like this, this is technically a pistol. It's a pistol caliber, so it's an up-close and personal kind of weapon. But uh, this configuration right here is technically a pistol. You put a little foregrip on it, you've turned it into an SBR. You put a... Uh, stock on it and you set it up against your shoulder, you convert it to an SBR. And uh, you're going to get a little 2 a.m. knock from the ATF unless you filled out your paperwork. So I highly recommend you do that. You can get a telescoping stock. It kind of slides in here. A little telescoping one. You can get a little folding stock. If you put the SB15 arm brace on here, as long as you don't hold it up against your shoulder when you're pulling that trigger, it's still a pistol. You tuck it in nice and tight though and use that arm brace like you shouldn't as a stock then uh, you might have some splanning to do. All right, let's, uh, let's see what comes in the box before we kind of take it apart. You get a magazine. This is a 30 rounder, um, nine by 19, so nine millimeter. You can, again, change out this magazine, change out the barrel, and you can shoot 357 SIG or 40 cal. These are metal lined, kind of cool, real nice magazines. You only get one and buying more isn't cheap. They're about 69 bucks each. I don't see that price dropping very soon. The cheapest I could find on a street price was about 63 bucks. But if you call SIG, they'll give you 20% off if you buy three of them and you get a mag holster. Um, but you got to give them the serial number of your gun to make sure that you are legit. Uh, don't steal mine. There we go. Um, let's have a look at what else you get. You get a cleaning kit, which is actually kind of cool and a little bit throwback. I like that. Uh, you get your lock. You get your SIG lube. You get your little safety plug. Um, I'm not even going to use this. I like my stuff. But this I was really excited about. You get a sling. And it already has the attach point right here. Boom, you are good to go with your sling. Pops right in there, American made, really good quality. I like it, I'm, I'm gonna use this sling, I, I really like it. You also get, I mean, you get a sticker, you get a little wrench, you get these. These are rail adapters, so you'll notice you've got a rail right on top, full length, awesome. But you can put these little adapters on anywhere on this foregrip, side, bottom, or other side, and you can put lights, lasers, clown noses, whatever you want. Uh, this is a highly customizable and configurable platform, and it's designed that way, right? They make it so you can really make this gun whatever you need it to be for how you need to use it. Uh, let me show you how easy it is to break down. If you are familiar with an AR-15, like I said, you're going to be really familiar with breaking this down. Um, you've got your pins here, right? So you can just pop this rear pin real easily, and you can swing it open on this front pivot pin, but we want to take it down all the way. So I recommend, especially if it's new to you, keep its back pin closed. Kind of get this Glock grip and take a little bit of pressure off. You might be able to push down your front pivot pin. See, it's, it's giving a little bit. There it is. 
just a little bit, enough for me to get in. I think that's enough, yeah. Enough for me to get in and pull that out. Okay, I got lucky. If you need to hammer that out the first couple times, you might need to, but I've, I've taken it out a few times and it seems to be okay. Then your rear one just pushes through like normal and you can just pull that out. Once you have those pins out, your upper and lower separate real nicely. Again, just like an AR-15. The lower doesn't come apart any more than that. I mean, if you wanna pop this, this trigger group out, you know what you can drop in here? Any AR-15 trigger group. You got a Magpul trigger group you like? Pop those out, drop it in, you're good to go. Um, but that's as far as we need to go on a field strip um, right here. Oh, look at that. You can pop this out. Got a little top secret hidden compartment down here. That's kind of cool. You got this uh, ergo kind of style. Um, this reminds me of the E2 grip kind of grip pattern uh, on the SIG pistols. But that feels really, really nice. So uh, we've got our lower off. And here's our upper. Now, this... Uh, charging handle and the bolt carrier group, man, they just want to come out on their own. Look at that. So just grab your charging handle, release it. This whole rigmarole comes out. That's your BCG and that's your charging handle. We'll put it aside. We'll tinker with that in a second. Here's our upper. Now, look at this foregrip. You might go, man, that is machined in there real tight. How do I get that off? Do I take off that screw? What do I do? <laughs> no, it's this. You slide it off. That's all you do. You want to put another one on, you pop it on. They actually make a carbon fiber version of this. It slides right on. But you can just take your whole foregrip off with not that much force. Now, now we start seeing how awesome this thing really is. These two screws, some Torx head, unscrew those, bunk, your whole barrel comes off. This is your 9mm 8-inch barrel, but this comes in a 4.5-inch barrel. And look, this is threaded on. You just torque this off, you got a threaded barrel ready for suppression. Uh, boy, this is just really easy to swap out in the field. Swap out the barrel, throw a new mag in, you're running 357 SIG or 40 or 9. Once you get this off, I'm not going to take it off now, I would say that's a detail strip more than a field strip, but once you get that off, it's short enough that all these components are going to fit in my ultrasonic cleaner and right in my tactical crock pot of frog lube, this is going to be a really easy gun for me to clean and maintain. So let's put our foregrip there, let's put our upper over here, let's have a look at our bolt carrier group just for fun. Alright, this should look familiar. Right, very AR looking bolt setup. Um, and this really reminds me of the inside of my uh, of my Desert Eagle 52. Super easy, you can choose just to take one of them off. I do both, so just choose one side, set it up like this, push down the spring and push that over and then let the spring up and off. And while you're at it, throw the spring down, take off this top component, pull both springs out. So both springs are out, then these little rods just slide out super easy. Now we have uh, our bolt inside our bolt carrier here. This is where you might need a tool. Uh, a pocket knife will do it, a little uh, screwdriver will do it. So take, uh, you know, I like to take a little bit of pressure off the firing pin while I do this, just to make sure I can lift that up nicely, get it started, and then just grab and pull that little retention pin out. Then you're ready to let the firing pin just come out on its own. And you've got a firing pin spring here, so be careful of that. Now you're ready to wobble this around. You can jiggle it and you'll see this swivels. Swivel it, pull this little retainer out, and your whole bolt comes out. That's it, ready to clean, scrub, and put back together. When you do put it back together, you wanna line up this groove right here with this groove right here. Line those up and slide it in. There we go. That way you know you've got it in the right spot. Then you can kinda of see your recessed hole there that this little pin goes in. So slide it in and then rotate it around so that you've got a little dot and a little dot right here. Line up so easy. Boy, even an airman could do it. Wow. <laughs> there you go. Now let's get our firing pin. Throw our spring back on. Doesn't matter which way it goes. Throw that in. Grab your little retention pin. Put a little bit of pressure on there just to make sure you've got it right. Again, this uh, recessed well makes it really easy just to get it close and push, let go. Do a little check, play peekaboo, just make sure you can see that firing pin coming through the bolt there, and you can. Uh, grab these rods. Now these only go in one way. You've got little recessed holes here, so you know that's gonna grab right here. Drop it in, this one. Drop it in, flip it over, grab one of your springs, slide it back on, grab your other spring, slide it back on, and then pick a side. We'll do the left side first. Pull the spring all the way down, grab your little clip, slide it right on top, and let go. Slide your spring down, 
push it into place and you are ready to put this back in your upper. Let's grab that upper. Let's put our foregrip back on. So, so tricky, right? Just line it up and slide it in. There it is, as simple as that, real nice, right? Uh, grab your charging handle. And I like to kind of put it in low and then press up as I pull there and, and you'll find where it kind of catches like that. Slide it in, make sure you got your bolt facing the right direction. Slide that in until, let me get you out of the way. And make sure you've got your bolt, there we go. So you're not catching anything. Slide it in until it kind of makes a little contact and you'll feel it pull the whole thing in and click it back into place. Grab your lower, slide it on, push your pivot pin back into position, drop it down, push your rear pin into position. You're ready to do a function check. Yeah, lock it open. Oh yeah, drop it down. If you want to dry fire it, you can. All right, make sure it's in the safe direction. And safety should not engage until you charge it, then it'll engage. There you go. It is as simple as that. This is a simple, simple weapon, and I think its power and its awesomeness lies somewhat in its simplicity. Again, if you know how to run an AR-15, you know how to run an MPX. Uh, lots and lots of cool features about this. Because of the caliber and because of the design, you really don't get a lot of muzzle rise on this. And in full auto, go watch some of the videos. This is obviously not a full auto or select fire one. That's LE and military only. But in full auto, this thing is flat as a pancake. I mean, this is really, really going to be a popular gun, I think, among some special forces teams, but also among some SWAT teams. Anybody who needs to breach, I think this is a great breaching gun. I also think this is a way better choice if you're an AR guy and you're an AR fan, but uh, you want to run around inside your house as a home defense weapon. I don't think an AR is the right weapon for a home defense gun. I think it's way too big to be running through doors chasing bad guys. That's not what you want. I think this is a perfect home defense gun. It's also the kind of thing that at least for a while when you go to the range, uh, you're going to get some oohs and ahs. So if you're the kind of guy who likes oohs and ahs, this is what you need. This is Ferrari Steve. Thank you for watching. Get out there. Use your gun. Practice, practice, practice. Get good with it. Get it dirty. Bring it back in and clean it. But you just need to put some... some uh, you need to put some lead down range, and trust me, this thing is gonna eat. This thing can eat bullets like like the Cookie Monster. In fact, I think that's gonna be my nickname for this is Cookie Monster, because it's just gonna eat up ammo. Rom, 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 rom. Get out there, use it, practice, because the first time you have to pull that trigger, you do not want that to be the first time you have pulled that trigger. This is Ferrari Steve. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you like what you see. I'll do a full detail strip and uh, cleaning video on this later. Uh, I might do some modification videos if I get my tax stamp stuff in order to put my little uh, stock on there and convert it to an SBR. But for now, I'm just going to go enjoy it. Stay safe out there. See Viz Pachum Parabellum, and we'll see you next time.